Hi guys. Hello. Hey. Everybody here? Yeah. You good? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Sweet. Hi, guys. Okay, so we're back in Red Larch, and Jazeera is gone. And what's up? Dear God. You sound uh, a little too happy. I'm a little scared. You're in Red Larch. What could possibly go wrong? Did we Everything. need to recount the last few sessions here? I saw it. Even though... I was there. I made it happen. You guys made it happen. I just... The yep. town could start caving in. There's lots of caves. <laughs> Shit, the town could just burn down for all we know. There could be some, you know, villagers that still don't like us because of what happened before. Maybe imagine, we're getting assassinated. That. Why would Why would anybody think <laughs> that would happen? I have no well, idea. you see, we had this one guy that stabbed a cook and killed him. Another one that tried to flame a flame a guard. <laughs> I did flame the guard. <laughs> You're so lucky they didn't freaking chop your yeah. head off. <laughs> I think I only did like eight points of damage. He'll, he'll be fine. <laughs> Suddenly, you see a half-burned man under over your bed tonight. <laughs> Imagine Two Face from the. the he has two sons. They've you. heard of this. <laughs> They're coming for you. You just don't know yet. Heads or tails, sir. Heads or tails. It's a trick. They're, they're half orcs. Or tails. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> they use me as a personal club because I'm only four foot ninety five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> what could happen? Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, so we're gonna go sell things, I believe. Okay. Um, Valenvos is still open, and um, if you guys have the player's handbook values, anything that you have is uh fifty percent resale value. Um, and then, uh, anything that's not like a normal mundane item, let me know and we'll find a value for it for your sale. Like vulture talons, giant ones. They may just be garbage, but they may be some trophy. Uh, the wingsuit and scale armor that goes with it. I, would that be in part of the... Manual. I uh, no, know the scale. Play hand. So the scale mail, the scale armor you guys found was a scale special, scale mail. isn't it? Yeah, it was specially constructed to go with those uh, suits. So I know, <laughs> I know you just sent me a copy of everything that was. In. Uh, you guys took vulture talons. That's that's fine. You're not gonna be able to get anything for the a couple silver pieces. You might be able to um, barter for like you get two silver pieces a piece or something. Just because it's like yeah, they're cool, but there's there's not much use for them right now. Uh, the leather armor mostly intact. You'll be able to get half market price for that. The wingsuit and scale armor that was to match. Um, in and of itself, like it looks. Interesting. Um, Valenvos, he's, uh, it's it's unique for sure. I I don't think I'd be able to resell it. Um, I can't I can't buy it from you. Um, so if you if I can't I can't buy it for it. It's not worth as much. Uh, I'll, I'll give you half half of what I would give you for the scale armor and uh, the wingsuit goes with it or nothing because it doesn't make sense. So he'll give you a, you get 25% scale armor price for selling that if you want to sell it. Um, and again, everything else. The saddles, um, they're so specific that um, he he doesn't have an interest in buying them because they don't fit a horse. Um, and you don't you don't find a giant vulture anywhere really ever. It's kind of a specific thing, and he doesn't have a use for them, so he he's not going to buy those either. 
but would you be able to like sell them for like scrap? No. Like they used to love it. Hmm. I mean the talons <clears throat> if uh if Josh would let us could possibly be repurposed as, you know, daggers. Uh, I mean, they're not that big to be able to carve, be carved out like that. It would take some crafting. Like, you can hang on to them and see if maybe you can do something with them later. But. Make a trophy necklace. Such, a, such an exotic thing to do. Like, having a proficiency with a dagger wouldn't give you anything to be able to use that as one. So. Okay. So, then, pretty much what we're looking at is the two leather armors are going to be able to be sold. The wingsuit and scale armor for, like, a quarter of what it's worth. The long sword and spear. Everything else we can either keep or dispose of. What I'm getting from it. Well, I'm sure the uh, the wingsuit could come in handy with the scale armor. So we're only getting a quarter of it. Yeah. I mean, I think Nora's the only one who can make use of it so far. Uh, she's... Let me see... Because again, it's it's meant to go specifically. It's built in a certain way for to fit that wingsuit. And like, if you don't use the wingsuit with it, it doesn't really fit. And she's already got a suit of scale, so she's not interested in it. And I could wear medium armor, but I don't know if it's any better than my uh, leather armor. Well, I'm sure it's a little bit better, but the way it's been modified, it might not be. I thought scale was heavy, or is it only medium? I think it's medium for scale. Might as well look the middle. Hey, the more you weigh, the harder you are to kidnap. Stay safe. Eat cake. Okay. Hey, guys, I got a question for you. What's easier mm -hmm. to pick up, the heavier it gets? Oh, God, I'm going to answer that. <laughs> Dicks. I know the answer. I'm not saying it. <laughs> Women. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <fucking> God. <laughs> anyway. <sighs> you were right, it is medium armor. Yeah. Um I, don't... Hmm? I think that is gonna be better than what you've got on rolling. What it, what is it? I was gonna look at it, but fourteen plus dex modifier. You know, it gives you disadvantage on stealth. That's okay. I think I'd, I think I'll take it. Scale? Yeah, the scale with the wingsuit. It might make okay. my stealth a little less, but I got pretty good stealth. Is it going to affect any of your other abilities? Stealth. I think it affects stealth. Yeah, it just gives you disadvantage. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can roll a 1 or a 20. And you're screwed. <laughs> okay. You could just now. You, now we have a half flying character, as long as he jumps off a cliff. Which could come in handy, since you know we've got all these valleys around. Depends yeah. on how it works, right. but yeah, sure. <laughs> It's great for cliff diving. You guys don't really like to find out how this stuff actually works, do you? It's a wingsuit. How, how would we find out? I don't know. Uh, it depends. Just wear it and jump off a cliff. Then we'll find out. Or we can just go talk to somebody who might be able to armor. I feel like the only people that would know that would be where we just came from. And they're getting attacked right now. 
Like I said, we can go look at that. Fair enough. <laughs> Hmm. Interesting. Mm, okay. All right, so what's next? But but the scale mill is not exactly it's not a full set of scale mill. Yeah, it's so not, just trying to figure out what it would be equal to. It's it's for all intents and purposes, it could be a work. It will work as scale mail, but you have to wear the wing wear with it. Yeah. Otherwise, to, it. to to take the wing wear out of it, uh, it's like the scale is built specifically to integrate with it, and part of the structural some of the structural straps and stuff integrate that with it. So without the wing wear, like it doesn't strap together right. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah. Because it's got parts taken out. Yeah, basically. Yeah, I don't know because that's got the legs strapped together too, doesn't it? Yeah, like it's got some in between the legs and stuff, and all of it. Yeah, so that would be kind of problematic. Although I mean, the scale mill would be it. nice, but you know what we could do? We could take the scale mill with the armor. Maybe they could make something out of it. Maybe half, half, like half a suit of scale. Top or bottom. I was thinking you could hold on to it, and then if you ever needed it, or we ever needed it, like a wingsuit type thing, you could always use it as that. I don't that pack thing. around scale armor. That would be, yeah. Yeah, that's true. So, I mean, we could keep it. We could keep it in our room. Let's just hang on to it. But I don't see a purpose for it. At this point, it's more just sell it, but maybe we need to find the right person to sell it to. Or we could infiltrate maybe the... Uh... <laughs> that's the next thing we could do. We could inf infiltrate with... Uh... Uh, Lancelot's help, maybe with his illusions. I don't know. His illusions can't wear the scale. <clears throat> no, never mind. Couldn't he just isolate it towards the face? And the. No, 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 no. no, I was thinking because your character basically, like you said, when they reached your hand out to shake it, it went through. It's an illusion. As a physical. That's well, also because he was trying to be someone who was like two feet taller than he was. Right. So he, he's an illusionist, really. Uh, when it comes to necromancy, I guess. I don't know. So I don't in know that about... sense, yeah, basically. Those are the values I got for what I was looking up real quick. So if everything's half value, we could get. So that's 20, 35, 36. Well, the scale armor would be 50. If it's half, it's 25. And then a quarter, uh, another half. So 12 and a half. But you said we were going to keep it for now, so that's why I didn't put it in there. Yeah, let's just keep it for now, because so that's we what might get a better bid on that. So that's the full prices is what I put. So 36 total, since we're doing uh, leather armor, then half of that would be 18. 18 with three or three of us, or four of us. So 13, or you said 36? 36, so 18, because he said half value. They take it for mm -hmm. half. So oh, we, we get 18? Yeah, I, just, like I, said, I put the full amount of what they're worth on there, and then just divide it. We can divide it. Each, each, each gets six <clears throat> coin. For sake of ease, could I try to persuade him to give us 20? Just to make oh, it easier 18. to divide this stuff. Yeah, because I forget we got Nora. Cause she never says, hey, we should probably do this. <laughs> Josh? No. Yeah. He's can listening. I roll, can I roll persuasion to see if he'll bump it up to 20 gold instead of 18? Mm, yeah. Uh, 
Uh, he says he'll round up. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so five each. Not as much as we would have got, but yeah. All right, so we got five gold each for that. Sweet. All right, now, yeah, let's keep the uh, keep the wingsuit and scale armor for now. I want to keep the mount, not the mounts, the saddles as well. Say it again. Oh, yeah. They they only fit a flying bird. Well, he won't he won't take them either. So I didn't know if, what we wanted to do with them. Um, I mean, if we're gonna hold on to the scale and the wingsuit to see how it works back at the tower, we might be able to find somebody that can buy those at the tower too. But, but they the, are the saddles, big and bulky. Yeah. Yeah, we're not taking those back with us. We I mean we can put them in the, yeah. the room or the rooms, or we can just give them to. I don't know. You know what they'd have use for them. With, at the the end with their with their uh stables. Well, the only thing I can think of now is like you said, just put all the extra stuff in the room, get some extra rations and water and extra food for the horse. Food and water for the horse. Maybe a keg of beer for or wine or whatever for Nora for the ride. Yeah. I don't feel like we've treated her well in a while. She's treating herself. I'll chip in on that. She's treating herself. <laughs> she has gold. Yeah, she takes care of herself. Okay. Um, yeah, we can, uh, we can go buy more rations. We spent what four days on the road? Uh, hmm. something like that. Yeah. So you're probably gonna have used probably eight rations at least, like a lunch and a and a, and a dinner. Uh, ra- they're can... they're bought in days worth. Oh, okay. So there you go. So I have I'm down to five. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we could always just not use rations because I have a wanderer trait. What is you, that? He grabs berries, right? Yeah, I can find food and fresh water for yourself and up to five other people each day, provided that the land offers berries, small game, water, and so forth. I think for part of the area we were at, it was pretty much no vegetation. Just uh, from now on, X, like, make sure that you're stating that that's actually happening, okay? Yeah, you have to say say that. I didn't even think I did that before. You know, I'm going to do that before we make camp for the night or whatever. Like, I'm going to just make sure you state that so I know what's happening, all right? Yeah, otherwise, it's not. I just forgot that it was happening. (laughs) I forgot I had that (laughs) until now. Okay. Um, Yeah, just make sure you state it from now on. Okay. Gotcha. Because it's going to factor into, like, role-playing parts of that. Like, this morning, if your standard, if your personal SOP was, like, we wake up in the morning and I go do that, like, it got interrupted. You didn't get to do it. So it matters, right? So just make sure that you... Gotcha. Yep. Okay. No problem. Yeah, okay. Uh, What else do we need to do? We've sold stuff. Um... How much are rations again? They're like... If you guys, there was a. I know there's one for Pathfinder. Hold on, I think there's a D and D wiki, which basically. I would assume there is. Uh, starting equipment. Rations. Wait. Pathfinder is really cool. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys. I'm gonna send a link out to you so you guys can do some uh, reading in advance. But... But there's a Pathfinder 2.0, which the the version we're going to be playing. Um, there's a wiki that everything in it is uploaded on the wiki page, and it's all hyperlinked within itself. So like, if it's like like I play a Magus in Pathfinder, 
right? That's his race or his class. So if it says like Magus spell list, you click Magus spell list, then it's hyperlinked to this. So like it's all linked within itself. So um, hopefully you guys that'll be there. And uh, right, what are we looking at? Rations. Up? Rations for a day are five silver, and they're two pounds a piece. Yeah. Venturing gear. So if you guys don't have a player's handbook, in order to be able to do that, uh, do go to. Uh, I'll put the link in the um, chat really quick. But it's D and D five e dot wiki.com yeah that's where I look at my spells at okay just because it's easier than looking in the handbook because I can actually yeah. look at like first this level second quite level as network together and stuff as I would like it to be but yeah true it's it's all you so I spent 25 silver on five more rations how much or how long would a water skin technically last? Like one, two, three days? Uh, it's uh like one gallon water skin. It's good for, is it one gallon? Four pints. Yeah, four pints. That's a half a gallon. It just says water skin can hold four pints. So yeah. It says oh. five pounds full. Mhm. Mm yeah, that's a half a gallon. Mm. Water is eight point nine pounds. Oh yeah. Per gallon. Given standard gravity. <sighs> Are we working in standard gravity? Yes, we're working in standard gravity. Weirdo. <laughs> That's actually probably a valid question. Yes. Yeah. So how long? One one day? Uh, um yeah. Depends on how much you drink, but yeah. Yeah, and then if you're it's like heat conditions and stuff will change that, but yeah. Yeah, and, and you'll fill your water skin up basically on the road too, I think. Yeah, it all depends. On, like, what you're gathering thing, doesn't it say water berries? Yes. Yes. Yeah, it yeah. does. So, uh, let me. Uh, berries, small game, water, and so forth. Mm hmm. Well, I'll go buy an extra water skin so that way I can have for the horse. Okay. And I'll get the five rations as well, so that's 27 silver for me. And then how much am I going to need for extra food for the horse? At uh, least I'm going to see five days worth. That's a, a good question. Give me one second. Let me see if it's actually even in the... I don't even know if animal feed... You can let them graze, man. Horses graze, too. Okay. While you're traveling and stuff, it's nothing. Just let them graze, and they'll be okay. Alright. I would like to go look for a spyglass in town, if anybody has any. Okay. Yeah, Valenvos has got... He's got quite the assortment. It's like, um, you see you're in the army, right? So remember the surplus yeah. stores outside the shop, outside the post? Right. There's like That's a bunch of post. random shit put in boxes and kept everywhere. And like, yeah, I think I've got that. It's over there under the under the other thing to the left of the green one and underneath the orange one, like that shit. Yeah. It's, right. It, he's kind of got his, his shop's kind of set up like that. Like he knows where everything is. If you were to walk through there, it kind of seems random. But like, if you ask him, he, he's got it. So, uh, spyglass though is a thousand gold pieces. No way, is it really? Oh, it yeah, is. I'm yeah, it's looking really at is. it right now. It really Holy is. Shit. That's not even through Valos trying to screw us over. Okay, nope, because <laughs> not gonna go buy one, I guess. It's a, it's a special thing, man. That's really cool. Like, remember Morgan Freeman and Robin Hood? Like, what the, like, what the, yeah, that, like, yeah, with this, or with, uh, yeah, Kevin Costner, he, like, held it up, and he's, like, with his sword, like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 he's, like, they're not, not everybody's seen ways. one, they're yeah, kind I remember of, that. They're, they're standard equipment, but they're also kind of uncommon or rare standard equipment, right? So, they're not magical, but, holy shit, what is this, nobody's seen one, so, 
Yeah. Well, I'm going to buy a spyglass. That's okay. Maybe I can just look at it and see how it's made. Sure. Maybe I can make make one myself. I mean, it's made really well. You know, That's how it's made. Mate, mate, <laughs> I, I've looked at gyms before. Is it some kind of polished stone here? Mm-hmm. It's like a polished stone that you can see through with no distortion, but it makes things look bigger. Huh. It's just got one laying around. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. How much? How much attention is he paying? Because I know if he's leaving anything like those those stores off post. <laughs> I get. Not, I get you a thousand dollars. I get. I get you. Mm, I, I like you. I get you thousand dollar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thousand dollar two right. for three thousand. Not get, not get, not get. Yeah, yeah, two for three thousand. That's a hell of a deal. Making a big deal. You want cheaper? You go down the road. Right? Is that, is that racist? I'm sorry, guys. It's not racist. It's fact. Every one of them. It doesn't matter. Middle of yeah. Oklahoma. It's owned by an Asian guy. It doesn't fucking matter. Right. Like, <laughs> We used to go to this one his, place and his wife's cut hair in the back. Bulk. Like, and she used to say, "Fuck you, GI." Wait, where at? Every time. When, when were you at Polk? Port, Port Polk, Louisiana. Uh, ninety. God, what was it? Nineties. Bro, I lived there for four years. Ninety-seven, I think. Ninety-seven to. Yeah, I was almost there for four years. Ninety-seven to like ninety. God, two thousand. How old are you? 46. That's where I just came from last summer, man. I wanted to hang myself oh, yeah. every day. Like, I just like, this place is horrible. Actually, I had, I had my mo the most fun there. I mean, you couldn't drink the water. Was probably my second best. Couldn't drink the water. I didn't drink water around for Polk. I drank alcohol like, Beer. all the time. That's, <laughs> That's all we the drank. best way to survive. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we, we bought a keg and put it in the, in the, in the bathtub with ice. Guys, you don't understand this place. Like, when they got a KFC, right? They finally got a KFC in Leesville. It got so busy. Oh, wow. They, because they got a KFC put in. It got so busy. What day you could go there depended on what your last name was. They had to alphabetize <laughs> and organize. Like, you're A through K. You can come here on Monday. You're J through freak or L through Z. You can come here on Tuesday. Like, that shit had to happen. Because it blocked traffic on the main road. It was so bad. Because there's nothing there. <laughs> True. It's there was a horrible. club called the Oasis Bar. Uh, Man with t-shirt night. I remember our first time that. All right, we have t-shirt night. I expect to see everybody over there. And like every bar in town was on the no-go list. Like every one of them was on the blacklist. Like. The only one you could go to, I, I'm sure it was still there, but Shooters, like the pool hall bar right on the main road. It was horrible. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got hit on by some yeah. 60 year old lady with no teeth in there. It was, uh, it was so bad. Was that the one that was connected to the, the like a little, uh, bre breakfast shop? Mm -mm. No. Okay, because I was going to say, there was one that was like a pool hall. It only had like two tables in it, though. That was the only pool thing there was i got locked in that one because i had a power outage and yeah. apparently i i passed out already and the the pay and, by the uh, hour hotel was across the street <laughs> like <laughs> maybe no i i got locked in there because they locked that place from the outside so you couldn't get out oh it, had, it literally had a, a lock on the outside no so i wake up and it's sometime in the morning and the gal comes in to count the guy the gal that owned the little like coffee shop morning breakfast place owned the bar and she mm -hmm. came in there to count the register up and i was yeah. like sitting there at the bar going hmm well at least i can have a drink and that's when she came in and i was like oh shit and she's just counting the money right there and i was like um hey how you doing <laughs> she jumped so fucking on like it's nothing because it happens every fucking weekend like <laughs> <laughs> she jumps so bad I was like, yeah. It's like, 
How, what happened? I was like, well, I got locked. I got locked in here. I I, I don't know. I, I think I passed out over there on the couch and they had a couch. I said, I think I sat on the couch and I passed out and, and I was like, I don't know why they locked me out. I mean, I was on the couch. We had a power outage that last night. I was like, oh, I didn't, obviously didn't know because I was passed out on your couch. But I woke up this morning and, and yeah, I was just sitting here. <laughs> it was so bad. We got a briefing when I in process there by one of the ladies from like disease control. She's oh, like, man. all right, listen up, soldiers. 50% of you are going to leave here with an STD. I was like, what the fuck? Right? <laughs> so Leesville, bad. Leesville. Like, oh my gosh, that place. I hated that place so yeah. bad. Yeah, don't go screw around the girls down there. Nope. If uh, you are going to screw around the girls down there, make sure you wear your junk. Remember for anyway. sure. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> There's some crazy so stuff bad. we heard. Anyway, sorry guys. So we're in the village of Red Larch. <laughs> we're selling stuff. We're not getting that spy glass, damn it. Alright. So what's next? I guess we head back towards the spire. Like, do we want to go All back right. to the spire? Okay. Um yeah, so you guys had back that direction we can do that just backtrack the road uh road's empty you guys don't even see travelers today um off in the distance you see another shepherd with a another flock of sheep and stuff grazing them and um like three hills away. It's just you making out dots on the hilltop. You make your way back to the mountains, um, back to where the trail up was that you've now traversed twice. This is your third time up, or third time on it. And you, uh, you know, making your way back up. Again, it's just slow going. The horse is having trouble. You know, the wagon's kind of empty. You guys uh, were able to get rid of some of the stuff. It's not wasn't so much the weight, it's just the terrain. Um, the horse is just having trouble getting up and down. But, uh, you guys make it back up and, and crest the hill over where you, uh, you had bedded down the night before. And, um, again, just wind whipping through the cavern and the, the same, just, uh, not a cloud in the sky. Just, uh, really warm here, like, You'd think you'd get up in the mountains and it would be a little chillier. It's just warm here. Like, the warm wind is just ripping through the cavern. You hear the howling of the wind again. It was dead silent last night, and it's just ripping through again today. And it's just loud. Uh, I mean, not loud, but, like, you know what I mean. You hear good wind speed and stuff. And again, as you get closer to the tower, same description, but, like, nothing has changed. There's no... Doesn't look like it was attacked. Um, but you uh, make it way back, and you can overlook the drawbridge from the down slope of the mountain that you're on. So we don't see any bodies of the people that were, you know, nope. coming up the path or anything. Nope. Is the drawbridge down? The drawbridge looks like it's successful. Yeah. Then we cross the drawbridge. Okay. So there's a gap of 20 feet that separates the ledge where the path ends from the closed, from the um, drawbridge on Feathergale Spiral. Um, it's a several hundred foot drop like we talked about yesterday. And there's a... Uh, I'm sorry, the... Um, the drawbridge is actually yeah. up. So like... It's there's a small gap between you and the the drawbridge, but there's a um, there's like a a, um, a a brass bell hanging from a wooden post on your side. So it looks like the gap between is slightly less distant than the height of the drawbridge across. It's pretty obvious that it drops down to cover the span, but at this point in time, it's raised and there's a brass bell up on a post. Do we ring the bell? Or do we uh, find our own way across? Blasting the ice. I just, I just <laughs> go ring the bell. 
Well, never mind then. <laughs> okay. You, you rang the bell? Yeah, I'm ringing the bell. All right, you ring the bell, and, uh... He's already rolling initiative. <laughs> no, no, not at all. I'm just, uh, there was a section that I missed here really quick that I just want to make sure... No, fuck it. Turn on. Fuck it. Go ahead and roll the initiative. Okay. Uh... <laughs> That's a pretty good roll, man. Shouldn't waste time. Uh, human female comes over, and um, there's a small window, not in the gate, but, like, off to this side, like a watch post, right? Like a, a little small outbuilding. She slides a big uh, a window open. You can see her. It's not extremely distant. You're talking 15 feet from the cliff, right? The biggest threat is that it's a 15-foot jump, and you've got a 300-foot fall. Um, and it, she, you see her open it up. Uh, Iowa, right, what brings you here today? What can I help you with? What brings you to our humble abode? This huge town. We've seen the spire. Of... We've seen the spire from down below, and it's magnificent. So we wanted to get a closer look. Hi, uh, it's magnificent, yes. What business have you with the Knights of uh, Feathergale? Well, we just are travelers, and, you know, maybe we have things that we can sell to them. Hmm. We found some curious saddles and armor not too long ago. Unfortunately, we didn't bring them with us. Found. Several of our knights failed to return yesterday. We found them. How convenient. Yes, we found them. Some other travelers said that they had uh, encountered some people. There's Maybe they were your men. Oh, wow. A group of uh, nine, I believe. Since uh, you're here in uh, good spirits, please, just wait a moment. She shuts the window. Five. Six, twenty, thirty. Like the drawbridge starts coming down. You see, she's now standing in the opening. Well, friendly travelers, may enter the spire. Please come with me. Thank you. So, uh, she we're, we're going to go. Come in. So if we, uh, please, I'll come with me. I will introduce you to the night commander and, uh, he will determine your deposition, disposition. Oh, and thank you. Please. I asked, I asked her if there's a place to put the fucking horse and cart because Jesus uh there's uh yeah so there's like in the, the outbuildings and stuff we guess all the pillars with all the hippogriffs and stuff on it like there's kind of a little open courtyard in the front before you actually like get into the tower so sure so um actually uh would you prefer uh we can stable your horse while you're here, if you'd like. Yeah, that'd be fine, I think. Okay. Uh, wait, wait here, please. And uh, she she walks over towards uh, an area over on the, the north side. Um, so the drawbridge comes in from the west to the tower. She walks to the north a little bit, so she takes that left and walks. Uh, and, um, she comes back with a... a young man who um, offers to take the horse and the wagon for you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, leads the horse and the wagon back over towards um, a uh, 
Um, it's not really actually even a stable. It just kind of looks like there's probably some hitching posts and stuff over there. There's bales of hay set up over there and stuff. There's a couple other horses. Uh, no trading wagons, but you see he takes the, the horse and the wagon over that way. And um, uh, So um, as you guys, she says, please, if you would, follow me. Uh, la, the night commander loves to meet all the guests here. All right. I'll follow her. She, um, as you guys pass by to like where the, um, stables are, the quote unquote stables, you see, uh, four actual hippogriffs and there's a couple vultures over there eating and, uh, uh, there's a, a another, um, knight seems to be heading that direction and he's wearing the same scale armor with it's got some fabric attached to it you know now it looks like that wing wear stuff the same thing so uh she leads you through uh entrance it's a 30 foot long hall of white stone um at the opposite end of the hall is and she starts taking you that way there's huge 12 foot tall doors uh similar to the gate you actually just walked through so um huge huge entrance ways there's a, a carved eagle f um there's an eagle carved from it, like this massive timber uh, above on the ceiling uh actually suspended on chains and then um it uh it's actually got a steel uh a, a fashion steel head and she walks you through there um up through a central looks like it's probably a central staircase into the middle of the the first floor and leads you up to uh this spiral staircase running up and through and um she just keeps climbing and it looks like she um let's see each level as you start getting through you see like the doors off to other entrances through parts of the level each floor uh, each of the doors is like 18, 20 feet higher than the last, uh, just in elevation. And um, you see, um, you, you pass through the, uh, where is it, the second floor, you can start to the smell the whiffs, smell a whiff of just like some meat being braised, and you can smell um, like a little bit of sweet something, and it smell, you know, you can smell the food being cooked on the second floor. Um, there's, uh, um, let's see, pass through the third floor, and, and as you're coming up around the staircase off to one side, it's just completely open on, um, one side of the tower. It looks like there's a meeting room in Great Hall, and there's a big, big conference table, um, what would be a conference table? Um, you see tapestries of, like, knights on hippogriffs, and fighting dragons and there's wyverns and griffins and all kinds of like mythical creatures that you, you're sure weren't mythical but you've never actually seen them you've just heard of people who know people who know people that have seen one um just all these creatures in flight and there's a there's a couple knights here and there um decked out in their uh full armor and uh the top of the tower, um, the stairs like end in this round stone gazebo that uh, continues up, and this the stair stop of the tower keeps going up in the top of the minaret and the top of the tire, the tower, and uh, there's a, a path paved with white stones, so the whole thing is carved of limestone. But in and of that, on the floor on the top level, there's each cardinal direction is uh, paved with white stones and uh ends in a, a stone crenellation and uh in that crenellation there's a spyglass on each direction um like mounted like a sightseeing binoculars right like you pay, put the quarter in and you whatever so like each one's mounted and it looks like it's done for um like surveillance to be able to look at the area around so they can see the entire canyon and from where you're at you can see that they they can see the entire canyon and valley that they're in. I mean, you're five floors out, you're 100 feet above the uh, 
um, drawbridge level where you guys came in, which was 400, 300 feet above the actual valley floor. So you're a quarter mile above the bottom elevation, even further than that. So you, know, like, you can just see the entire valley from around you. Um, but she, she brings you up, hand on her chest, Knight Commander, guests, and she bows down. And uh, the commander of the Feathergale Knights is a well-built male human. He's in his 50s, got some gray in his hair. Uh, embossed feather patterns ornament the plates of his armor. You guys have seen the feather patterns before. Okay. And uh, he's got a very kingly looking cloak with a feathered mantle. So it actually, you know, you've seen the cliche like cape with the red fabric and it's all like white and leopard spot. No, it's, instead it's, it's rimmed with feathers all the way down and around it. And uh, he smooths his white blonde hair into place and bows low before you as if he were the only a, uh, like, court courtier. He says, welcome to Feathergale Spiral. Sp we welcome to Feathergale Spiral, retreat of the Feathergale Society. I am Thurl Maraska, the Lord Commander, at your service. Um, I'll bow and say, pleasure. I'm Roland Woodhold. I as well and introduce myself. I am Air Dom. I do the same thing. <laughs> I am Lancelot. He, uh, at the last one, he kind of is taken aback and he's got a raised eyebrow. Is <sighs> speaking rodent, although I would not lower you to that standard, I, uh, to that position. I apologize. I thought I was a man of the world, however. Every day, I am surprised by learning new things. Many welcomes. Thank you. Please, the uh, spire. while you're here, uh, for, while you're here, please, this is, uh, if you need anything, let any of the, any of my uh, fellow knights and uh, anyone in the tower, please just ask. And they will point you in the direction of anything you may desire or need, as long as you remain amenable to the order here. Thank you. I do have a, a question. Um, there was some men we met on the road, and they were quite rude. Um, they drove us off as we were trying to come up here earlier, but they drove us away, and... Uh, I didn't seem happy with you, but I hope that went well. His uh, his face just darkens, and he just gets like immediately grim. He's like, oh. I did not hope to uh, speak of such things to new visitors. There's, uh, there's great evil lurking among the hills here and in this valley. And de depraved cultists led by wretched monsters. Um, Please, let us not speak of such matters. The spire is safe and secure. Uh, we 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 can speak of that after the feast. And it has warmed our blood. Today is our uh, feast of celebration. As a matter of fact, you're, it's much by chance that you're here today. You are more than welcome to join the order uh, in our celebration today. We are honoring our 10th year here at the spire and the formation of the order. Ah, thank you. Well, it does smell lovely. We can smell it coming up. Ah, uh, best cooks. We have the we have the best cooks and, and spare no expense, especially for such an honor today. Thank you. The spire is really a beautiful spectacle to, to, to see. Thank you. We take great pride in keeping it so. Hmm. You guys want to say anything? <laughs> I mean, you're doing great so far. Yeah, I like this. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're the appointed diplomat. <laughs> not not my goal here. <laughs> <laughs> All 
Ah, and yes, we were. We stayed at. We stayed across the canyon last night, and it was so beautiful outside. The stars, beautiful. The yes. winds were so odd. It was so hot too. <laughs> the. Uh... Yes, we we actually rather enjoy that. A uh, the sights here are absolutely beautiful, which are uh, we enjoy very much as the order has been blessed. Yes, you 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 have. Um, can we get a guide? Ah, well, um, uh, unfortunately, we don't, uh, we do not have anyone to give you a tour. However, you are free to traverse the tower as you see fit. So, uh, everyone here will answer questions if you have any and possibly point you in the right direction. What, uh, what, what are you, is there something specific you, uh, you're seeking uh, during your visit here? No, I just didn't know if we needed a guide to guide us so that oh, we are watched. Please. Come and go as you please. I just don't want to get lost. <laughs> that too, or wonder where we should. Uh, nothing uh, specifically off limits. Oh, well, thank you. I'm going to... Just Do, please are respect we still the there privacy. Or... I, I would ask that you respect the privacy, obviously, and... and dignity of, hey, of we, we'll not go into people's rooms members of, of the order we're still in the room with the uh spy glasses right or did we uh, pass that room yeah oh, i think i'll take a look through their spy glasses please. i seen one of these in a store just recently and was curious about them please do so uh what uh sure what direction pick one uh this we're southern one towards the shallow graves thanks right, give me one second because i will show you but i need to do something first <clears throat> You said south or west? Sorry. Yeah, towards towards the shallow graves, kind of. Where am I at? Uh... There you go. Should be up on your screen. So you guys have seen... Uh, I'll be able to reveal more than that to you. I just found out I can polygon reveal, which is freaking cool. There you go. Okay, so I'm guessing the the focal point. Okay. What I'm yeah, looking you're from. at the you're at the top of the spire, and then I'll I'll do this really quick uh, reveal. And here's the spiral spire, and everywhere you came in on. Oh, okay. So I'm actually looking towards the drawbridge. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, okay. Now can I see if there's water down below? <laughs> uh, or is it foggy? Sure. You want to go to one of the other spot, the uh, one of the other spy glasses? Yeah. Because this does this not show the uh, the canyon? I'm curious about looking at this canyon and see if there's water below, or if there's just fog or if it's a mystery and are, are they able to see this the other two guys or are they just uh, I mean you can tell them or you guys can swap out or whatever you want to do you guys should come look at these it's quite fascinating of course I'll wander to the next one in a counterclockwise. Sure. 
Um, I will put everything on here except what I see at the, um, like, names and stuff, so. Oh, okay, okay. Right. I know that name says Feathergate Spire, but... <laughs> Oh, okay. Are those birds part of the? I see birds They're like birds that flying around, bro. Like that's that's okay. all those ones are. Sorry. <laughs> I'm like, is that just birds or is this just... okay? Yeah, they're just birds. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's Superman. So, and as you like, it's part of their. So watch. the entire yeah. spire is actually like it's on a like a plateau, like a like a devil's tower yeah. almost. Yeah, yeah. If you think the Devil's Tower new in Nevada or New Mexico, wherever that is, it might be in Arizona. Like, picture putting the tower on top of that thing. Okay, cool. And then the north is pretty empty. I I can put it up there for you, but it's literally the the top of the map. So. Oh okay. I. So Seems there, like they have a couple blind spots. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this one is, this one's not. So. But I, I can't see if there's water down there. It's just is it just like an empty cavern? There's a or river. Is it foggy? Right here, bro. It says Lost River. Yes. I'm it. <laughs> right here. <laughs> oh i'm not i'm zoomed in too far okay oh yeah yeah it's a big big windy river it looks like it's running through the whole thing <laughs> oh okay that was i was zoomed way in okay nice and it goes into a cave <laughs> or it goes back into the mountain it's like that's cool that's why it's lost because it goes there and is lost forever. Yeah, this is uh, quite the interesting, very fortified position, actually. We uh, So, yeah, there's no one getting in here. It's no secret that we enjoy that. It's quite impressive. Really, it is. A river that runs in the mountain. Interesting. Do you have a lot of people that try to fight you guys, basically? Most people know better. You were mentioning the cultists earlier. Are you well uh, acquainted with them? Or what uh, they're about? Uh, as I said, we can speak of these things at another time. Okay. Nice. Now what should we do? We can oh, feel free. Uh, please. Uh, as our cooks are preparing our feast, you may do as you uh, wish. Please uh, respect the tower and its occupants, and uh, you are more than invited to our celebration feast tonight. Oh, thank you. What are you celebrating again? Again, it's the our decade anniversary of our occupancy of Feathergale Spiral Spire. So I think I will head down towards the wafting sound of the kitchen. Sure. Don't step the cookie. Ooh. There, are we still there's... with uh are we still with what's his face like before he walks down or after he walks down or whatever uh he seems to be he was like reconning and surveilling the valley and stuff up here before you guys came in you caught him in the middle of it he stepped away from one of the spy glasses and stuff in order to do that so he goes back to his business as far as taking care of that 
I want to walk up and ask him if he has any magical people here. Has any what? They could teach me mages, people that use magic. I want to, I want to, I want to talk to them. Uh, no. I asked no. more about it. We, uh. Ah, okay. All right, well, I guess I'm going to the kitchen with him. <laughs> okay. As as Erdan? I'll go to the kitchen, too. Might as well get some munchies on. Oh, I figured Erdan would try to look at their library. I didn't imagine they were very educated people. Do they have a library? I don't know. Did you ask? Okay, that's, that's, that's me asking. My apologies. Is there a library? Oh, okay. Here? Uh, do, 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 do. No. Okay, then to the kitchen I go. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. So you guys head down to the kitchen. Uh, it's on the second level, and uh, so in the, you just find the kitchen. It's actually like you can smell. You know, it's there. Hey, sleepy. Thanks for lurk. Welcome to D and D. Um. So, uh, you guys know it's on the second level because you smell the food. You can hear the moving around. There was a door that separated the stairwell and the actual kitchen, but you find it. It's unlocked. You guys are able to go in there. And the, the kitchen is, uh, there's like sacks and heaped along the walls, flour and potatoes and uh, different grains and stuff. And there's a small pile of vegetables spread on the table in the middle of the kitchen, and some of it has been chopped up. and some of it is, uh, it looks like there's a knife set down like somebody was doing it and walked away from it for a minute. Uh, and there's a huge steaming cauldron in the middle of the, uh, the room. And, um, uh, I have this map. Hold on a second. So I'll bring you to it. Um, I, there we go. So, um, you guys were... So I'll show you this really quick. It, it uh, should have brought you to a blank page, yeah? So this is the pinnacle where you guys looked at, like, this. Oh, hold on a second. Turn on Fog of War. So reveal that shit. And then um, the kitchen. You guys saw the stairways. And then here, the kitchen is is this room right here. You guys should be able to see S6. It says ground level. Or, well, it doesn't say ground level for you guys. Yeah, we, we can see it now. S6. Okay. Um, so, uh, you guys see that. You're in there, and you can see the table there in the middle of the cauldron and stuff. Sorry, I just got a text from my brother. Um, so, uh, there's two wooden paddles and two knives hanging on a rack next to a brick oven. Um, and there's some food in the oven and stuff. And, uh, there are four individuals around the cauldron dressed similar to a couple of the riders. Not the one that was armored, but, uh, like in robes and stuff. And, um... They they seem to be like all smell testing the cauldron. Like you can smell there's food in it that's boiling like soup or something, but also at the same time, like they just look like they're just inhaling it. It's really weird. And then um so as they as you walk in, they they stop. Oh welcome. Can I can I get you something? We're prepping for the feast, but uh do you need do you need something in the meantime? Can I can I help you with something? No, it just it smells good. What is it? Uh just just prepping all the food for the feast tonight. Vegetables and, and we have uh roast meat in the oven and uh we're making a, a, a side uh soup dish for so just just getting ready for tonight. There's much to do, but if you need something, we can help you. Uh just please No, uh, we're, uh, we're fine. Thank can you. We, can we make it quick is all. Thank you. Like they, they're very it's oriented towards so... their work. They want to help you, but they also like their priority is is they have one, so 
Right, they're getting ready for dinner, so yeah. Um, I guess there's rooms off to the spire. So I guess we we'll go to the rooms, but which room do you want to go to first, guys? The one to the right, the one to the left. Hmm. Clockwise or counterclockwise? Nice. I've always preferred clockwise. <laughs> so counterclockwise it is. <laughs> okay, so we'll go to the room over here, I guess, and see what through this through this door. And you guys, a... th just to show you, this is the room where you came in through. Sorry. Okay. Oh, this is so this is the bottom through... floor, ground yeah, floor. This okay, is yeah. The, yeah. Okay, so yeah, we would we would want to go look in what's this room. In this okay, floor. sure. Um, so you guys come in, and this is uh. Um, there's a bright hot room on the east quarter of the floor. There's flowers and shrubs, just all kinds of variety and almost a labyrinth of uh, planters. They're not grown overgrown or anything. It just looks like they're. It looks like the main floor was plants, and they just didn't put planters in certain areas for walkways. And now they're they're all accessible to be able to be tended and stuff like that. Um, the uh, um, Spidery red and purple plants growing suspended in baskets in midair, um, and there's there's a couple robed uh, humans watering the plants. Uh, there's four people in the room to be specific. Again, everybody's wearing kind of the same robes, and uh, yeah. all right, uh, yeah, that's so the pilots are herb garden or something. Mm -hmm. All right. Shall we continue to look around the, the bottom floor, yeah, guys? Yeah, do it. All right. Which one do you want to go to? Uh, where are we at? We're in four right now, or seven, or is there both the same place? Four is the Dude, stairway. This... See the arrow. Oh, sorry. Nope, you're good. I guess go back through this way and go into this one. Sure. If it's uh, open, sorry, I mean... uh, five. I'm sorry, the one to the south. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah. As so you guys go enter the door, none of these are locked. Um, it's a dormitory. There's uh four double bunks in here. Um, no one's in here. Just empty. Five words. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Oh. So. Hmm. We can go out here if you guys want to, and then do this door. There's nobody around us right now, right? Where we just went. In this in this room, no, he said there, there was no one there. Just an empty dormitory. I'm gonna look to Roland and be like, you know, for someone that says that they uh, know they have missing writers, they don't seem too worked up worked up about it. The missing riders? The ones we... <clears throat> no, we did not. That's and we I will think. not talk about that. Just That's in case I... their ears hear. Seeing their uh, visual capabilities, I'm wondering if maybe they know something we don't. Well, it's, they were hostile to us when they just saw us going around, but yet now they're letting us in. This all seems a little off to me. Sketchy. Who was hostile to you? I agree. The people, they... the birds, when they just kind of attacked us. The ones that attacked the the random people desecrating graves in the middle of the country? Those people? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Just curious. I just want to make sure we were on the same page. They, they, <laughs> they, but they attacked us after that, though. Because they, well, they saw you seized. desecrating graves and got to you when they could. Right, fair enough. I mean, we I'll put allow stuff, it. We, we put the graves back. Uh, yeah. So, what would you do if somebody <laughs> dug your mom up to look at her out of the grave, out of the grave, and then like threw some rocks back on her to bury her and didn't do anything about it? And probably did. Didn't you take some stuff off the bodies too? That, so you're grave robbing also. Oh. No, no, we didn't, no. We didn't Nora didn't want us to. No, but do they know that? 
No, but, I mean, if they yeah. saw us uncover and then cover them back up, they should know that. I mean, it was from a distance, obviously, because they flew in. So could they tell? I don't know. You tell me, Mr. DM. I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Should we continue exploring Roll the bottom floor, Roll a motive check with a difficulty yeah. class of 150. And I'll tell you. <laughs> so you said roll a D100 and a D20? No. Several times? <laughs> no, one roll. Got you. <laughs> All right, let, let me just How many D100s do I need to roll? <laughs> 120 plus your sense motive check and beat a DC 150 and tell me what you get. All right, fair enough. <laughs> I'll allow it. This fool's going to do it. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> this guy. So should we continue exploring? Yeah, I guess. All right, let's peek in this room over here, S3. Or maybe S1. I don't think it's S1, though. Mm, I don't know. I think S1 is the main area. Fucking throw it mm. off if it's like fucking S10. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's number eight. Who knows? Kind of weird order goes S2 and 6. Let's jump over here for S5. Let's do S7 over here. It could be 1. It could be 3. It could be 8. Sorry, this one here. I was... Okay. Uh, yeah, so you guys... We'll, we'll look in there. Dip in through the Great Hall and into this room here. S3. What's this um, room? You, you walk and in the room... And uh, as you as you go to open the door, like one of the the knights is walking through the great hall, and he kind of stops to look at you for a second as you go in the room, and he waits right here. And uh, as you open the door, there are weapons racks with swords and crossbows, and they're all locked. Every one of them has like crossbars, and they're locked, and uh, they have big, huge padlocks on them and stuff. Just oh. going to slowly close that door. Really <laughs> yeah. As you close the door, the uh, knight in the Great Hall continues to walk through the front doors. It's, uh, hmm. Probably a good decision and continues to walk through into the staircase. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go up the next floor and check it out. Shall we? Sounds like a good idea. You guys come up, and uh, this was... Is that the first door right there? Yep. Yeah, so you guys walk through, and... I said reveal, you stupid shit. Stop it! Stop Walk it. through, and we go blind! <laughs> God. Surrounded by pitch blackness. <laughs> All right, so it's a big great hall, and um, the great hall itself spans half the diameter of the tower, so and actually that entire uh, side there. Between the overlarge windows, uh, which you guys see there, when it actually juts out from the wall, and so there's a huge, or no, I'm sorry, there's four of them, one, two, three, four, so one at the, like, one o'clock, 2.30, 4.30, and five, and you see, uh, um, there's tapestries between the windows. There's huge tapestries depicting scenes of the knights and hippogriffs. And you guys walk through these kind of, the doors are open so you saw it. There's fighting dragons and jousting with like between clouds and stuff. High on the walls are the mounted heads. Now you can see them, you didn't see them before. So like all these, these little um, things jutting out from the wall here. They're all marked like right here, right? They're all the, uh, the trophied heads of... Uh, Griffins and wyverns and owl bears and there's a manticore head and uh, a long curved table set for a feast stretches between the the hall's twin hearths right here. So like there's big giant fireplaces to warm the hall and the table looks like there's no food on it yet, but it it, uh, it looks like it's made up for the great big feast that's gonna that's supposed to happen that you you were hearing about earlier. So looks like they're getting ready. Oh. This is where the feast is gonna be. 
the dining area. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, let's uh, continue looking, I suppose. Okay. So, is this for? Hmm? Close. It's as close as I could make it when I pinned it. Okay, is, is there a wall between? I, I mean, is there a wall these, between? Each one of these squares is 10 feet also. Looks like this is open, like there's no... Yeah, uh, give me a sec, because I just did it because you guys were here, so... Um... Boop, boop. There you go. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It's, yep. It's um, sort of, but it doesn't reveal all because that's only a big portion of the spire. Yeah. Another door, and another door, okay. and another door, and another door. Which mm -hmm. door, guys? Do you want to go through? Um, if you guys like, make your way over there. You hear Any footsteps door. on the. You hear footsteps on the spiral staircase and stuff like metallic booted feet and all that stuff so there's traffic in the in the staircase right now but um yeah so pick a door what? any door yeah pick a door one of you guys go ahead yeah fucking north north side door okay fuck it right there all right yep uh let me do this i like this polygon reveal this is cool it's this works better Especially in an area like this. Okay. Right. Uh, um, so you guys go in and open the door. To uh, you see the room, it's twenty feet by thirty feet, whatever, and semi conical. Um, this chamber contains two beds, a fireplace, a closet, two chests, a small tapestry on the wall. Ah, uh, seems like a barracks room or someone's room. We should probably leave. Fair enough. I imagine the rest are the same. We can peek our heads in, but we should probably knock first. Agreed. I'll okay. knock on the next one. Yes. No answer. Whoever knock, go ahead and peek your head in. Peek it open with all my might. I'm just joking. <laughs> Nicely open. It the opens. Door. It's another room, matches the other one. Yeah. All right, I'm going to do the same thing to the next room. Knock and see if anybody answers. If not, open it. And I'll go to the next. I'm going to peek my head in. If it's the same thing, I'll tell you guys, hey, they're all barracks rooms. Sweet. Huh. A dining hall with barracks. Or sleeping quarters. Interesting. Keep the kitchen makes close to the bedroom, man. Make, makes, it, <laughs> makes it convenient when you're full. Yeah. As you guys are uh, like kind of looking in the rooms, and you close the last door, and you see some attendants come out of the uh, turn around from the, the banquet table. They had just set down like a fruit spread. There's a bunch of grapes, and you see melons and stuff, and uh, some apples. And they turn around, and they look at you. And, uh, Gentlemen, please, uh, respect. Ah, we didn't realize they were all rooms. You are. Sleeping quarters. I, uh, well. And we were, we were question, given please. permission. I understand, ah, yes, but I wouldn't let anybody catch uh, The next, the next floor, is it any sleeping quarters there? I. Uh, yes, I, I wouldn't go, uh, looking in any, any, uh, looking for any trouble on the next floor above either. Uh, more of the same and lord uh night night commander Moroska's apartment is is on the next floor also i wouldn't uh i wouldn't push your luck ah thank you for letting us know all right so i'm gonna walk over the table may i have an apple ah of course you're invited to the feast, of course. Uh, I, we wouldn't keep an apple from you. Uh, please, gentlemen. Oh, thank the, you. The spread is an appetizer for tonight's feast. Please have help yourselves. Ah, oh, thank you. I'll grab a nice crisp apple and 
smell it and take a bite. Mm-hmm. Roll for poison damage? <laughs> no. <laughs> See, you guys don't know. <laughs> I thought it was funny. They're so untrusting now. <laughs> Alright. What would you like to do now? We could go outside, walk around the spire. Hmm. No? I think that's a good idea. No? Okay. I think it is a good idea. Sorry. So I, I know somebody do. wants to Somebody wants to go peeking around. Nobody I do, wants but to go I wasn't going to say anything. Jazeera's not going to cause trouble, so I know somebody. I know. Like, you got to go <laughs> feel Jazeera. some shit. Jazeera's not, <laughs> not a rogue. We don't have a rogue anymore, I, so it's like... I'm not trying to steal anything. I just... It makes me curious as to what's on the next floor. I don't believe you. Until you go there. Look, so, I haven't stolen anything in this entire game. Yet. So far, yes. No. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of find it interesting that he said that there was no magic users, but yet one of the guys that was flying was casting magic. So it makes me suspicious. It's Is almost it like not magic? everybody in the world tells the truth. Holy shit! All right. I'm new to the game. I trust everybody. Let's go. I, I Let's trust go outside and look at Just the kidding. Love you, Jay. Let's go outside. Love you too. I'm, I'm going to stay up here and eat some grapes. I'm going to stay right here and eat this pizza. Pepperoni, pepperoni and jalapeno, bro. Dude, this sounds fucking amazing. I'm actually tempted to go make my steak from yesterday. Oh, heat, reheat it. I really just want to go outside and see if there's a, a way off this rock now that I know how how it's set up. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. I would say we should search upstairs, but at the same time, I don't feel like dying. Do what? He said he doesn't feel like dying about searching some, upstairs. Some, oh. Sometimes... Sometimes adventures are won by the risky, by the, uh, the bold. Hey, little dude, you want to go try? <laughs> I'll just stay down here, see if there's a head that rolls. <laughs>